Hi, everyone. Um, I've muted you all um, for the moment just because we get a lot of feedback if we don't do that. But my name is Mari Graham Evans, and I'm the social media strategist here at the Presbyterian Mission Agency. And um, with me is Robin Sakula, who's from the foundation. I'll let her um, introduce herself, and Lauren Rogers, who um, is with us from Mission Engagement and Support Special Offerings Office. Yes. Cool. Hi, uh, I'm Robin Sakula. I'm the Vice President of Communications and Marketing for the Presbyterian Foundation. And uh, we have, this is the second year we've partnered together to present this webinar, which will walk you through how churches can use uh, Giving Tuesday to uh, reach out to audiences and use it um, to collect money for a special program or for fundraising purposes. And uh, I'm really excited about that and happy to be with you. And I'm Warren Rogers. I am a mission, um, what am I? <laughs> mission specialist with the Office of Special Offerings, which is within um, mission engagement and support at the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Uh, I'm also leading uh, the PMA's efforts for Giving Tuesday this year, and we'll share a little bit about that with you later. Um, and then we also have uh, Phil. Oh, yeah, online. and I've unmuted you, Phil. Oh. I'm, uh, I'll introduce myself, I'm uh, Reverend Phil Beck. I am the pastor at First United Presbyterian Church in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, which is just north of Pittsburgh. It's a mid-sized congregation uh, in a, a, a river town right along the Allegheny River. And it is good to be with you all. So Phil is really part of the reason why I became interested in Giving Tuesday. Um, Last year, I pulled our records for Giving Tuesday for congregations for giving to see if there were any churches that were really doing a great job with Giving Tuesday or ahead. Um, and I, his church was the one that popped up. And I started looking around. I thought, well, this must be a really large church or there must be. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized, no, this is, this is a, um, a mid-sized church that is just really figured out a way to maximize this uh, giving opportunity. So we wrote a story about it and we did put this webinar together to teach other churches how to um, how to use Giving Tuesday. This year we invited Phil to join us because we think his story is of great interest to other church folks who will be really interested in what he can share with us about how his church uses Giving Tuesday. So we're very glad to have Phil back with us. Um, Phil is going to do our first uh, item of business for our webinar, which is to begin with prayer. And then he's going to give us some theological background on uh, giving that uh, you, we can all use during this time in which we're thinking a lot about being generous. Great. Okay. Let's pray, shall we? For God, we are grateful for opportunities to be with each other through technology through the opportunities to share about giving and Giving Tuesday. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with us in all that we do and all that we say this day, that you open us to possibilities and to our churches, uh, possibilities as well. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Take it away, Phil. Yeah, I'm going to try to do the that is here of... Uh, a little PowerPoint. I am not awesome at PowerPoint, so <laughs> excuse me on all that. My kids are awesome. They help do everything. And so let me see if I can get this going the right way and see if I can get it going. So I wanted to share a little bit just uh, about sort of the theological basis for um, why our church has gotten involved in Giving Tuesday, but also just a larger um, breadth and depth around stewardship as well. And so both of those things are actually really um, important pieces. And so they're really tied together. And those of you who are pastors or in the church communities, um, these things are not unusual uh, or not new for you. They're things that you've seen before as well. Um, we really take um, very seriously uh, our calling towards generosity and giving at First United Presbyterian Church. And we think that the 2 Corinthians 9, that 6 through 15, that's thrown up on the 
so that you can see is a really important one for us. And we really have um, centered on the generosity piece of that, um, but also the idea of that we are connected through this giving and it's a form of thanksgiving. So that verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. We really think that um, at First United and as a, a session in a congregation that uh, Giving Tuesday is a really great opportunity to sort of wrap that all in and it's an expression of thanks. It's a one-time sort of giving opportunity um, for us and so we really um, spend a lot of time in talking about that and actually uh, and I'll get into it in a little bit but also sort of tying what we do in the mission and ministry at First United to all of the the different pieces that are a part of the scripture uh, etc and I'm going to share if I can go to the next screen if you have not read this um, this small book by Henry Nowen He's a Roman Catholic priest. He's best known for um, uh, his spirituality and some other different bits and pieces that he does. Um, the Life of the Beloved and uh, Can You Share the Cup. He uh, has passed away some years ago now, but he did a speaking on the spirituality of fundraising, which is really an interesting uh, piece. And if you have never read that book, it's easy to to find it you can google it there's pdfs out on the the internet um, about it as well but there's this middle piece that's in here it's sort of the second um paragraph and i wanted to read it because i want us to hear this i think that this is really the important piece about giving tuesday he says fundraising is precisely the opposite of begging when we seek to raise funds we are not saying please could you help us out because lately it's been hard Rather, we are declaring we have a vision that is amazing and exciting. We are inviting you to invest yourself through the resources that God has given you, your energy, your prayers, and your money, in this work to which God has called us. Our invitation is clear and confident because we trust that our vision and mission are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. And then a little bit further, he says, asking people for money is giving them the opportunity to put their resources at the disposal of the kingdom to raise funds is to offer people the chance to invest what they have in the work of God. And Giving Tuesday really gives us that opportunity as we see in both the, the, the lesson from 2 Corinthians, but also in what Nowen says, that it gives people to invest in the mission and ministry and vision of your congregation and and then going forth and it not only invites your congregation to be a part of that but if you are um, uh, tech savvy and in the in the world uh, with um, you know Facebook lives or you uh, share your sermons or videos or other bits and pieces it really invites other people to be a part of this vision and mission too and so um, I know that we uh, do a very low-tech um, Facebook Live of my sermons most Sundays. And I am told that folks are watching that from uh, in places like Germany, and we're in Pennsylvania again, and Maryland, and Oklahoma, and California, and Texas, and so all over. And so Giving Tuesday gives us a, a unique opportunity to invite people who may not even be physically present in our congregations to be a part of the work that we're doing in the world. And so I think that that's a really important piece. And again, it's a day that we can focus on that and give some opportunities there. And so I just share that with you um, this day. And um, Robin, do I want to call back to you just for a second on things or? Well, I do. Well, I'm going to just say that I really love what you shared. And um, I thought particularly the quote for the book, I wrote down the author and the name of the book. I think that's going to be a must read for me. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually uh, ask Mari to come in now and tell us a little bit about um, Giving Tuesday and, yeah. um, and a little bit of the history because it, it may not be a familiar term to you. So we want to tell you a little bit about what Giving Tuesday is. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Um, like we mentioned earlier, my name's Mari, and part of my job at the mission agency, other than um, doing the social media 
for the national accounts is to be a resource for our churches, um, especially for stuff like this. Um, Giving Tuesday started in 2012, um, really based off of the idea that we have, um, you know, of course, Black Friday after Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday, and now we have Giving Tuesday. So in, you know, a, a time frame that is so focused on consumerism and, and, and buying things, they really wanted to figure out a way of um, how we can sort of use that same momentum, but um, injecting some generosity good really turn what a giving um, movement um, and here are just some some stats for you this is all from the giving Tuesday website um, so last year um, 2018 they saw gifts from over 150 countries uh, over 400 million dollars raised online um, uh, over 14 billion social media impressions. So an impression is just whenever someone saw the post. Um, and the mean online gift was over a hundred bucks, which is pretty, you know, incredible. So that's just a few numbers for you. Um, in the Presbyterian um, church, just in the last four years, we've done Giving Tuesday about every year. Each year we refine um, our, our, our strategies with it and we've seen pretty steady growth but really giving Tuesday for our churches at you know the the local level is a way to generate some excitement and um, and and really infuse you know the spirit of generosity into members of your community and members of your church as we enter you know the Advent season which is a season of anticipation and waiting, uh, and waiting and really turning the more consumerist side of Black Friday and Cyber Monday into, um, into gifts of generosity. And, and where we really see growth, at least on our end, especially because this is so social media focused, is the number of online, like the number of new donors that we get from this. Um, and, and keep in mind, and I don't know if, you know, Phil has experienced this, um, because of the social media and online nature of all of this, your your donor base is going to be a little younger. And so what we really emphasize to folks is that um, it doesn't matter how large or small the gift is. Um, we really look at just getting more and more people excited about this every year and really building momentum behind it. And also just being more comfortable with talking about giving and fundraising, which I know can be pretty awkward. Uh, I myself am not super comfortable with it. That's why we have Lauren and our folks in special offerings. But to as a way to kind of get your toes wet. And it's also super fun. The Giving Tuesday itself provide a number of different resources, which we'll share with you all. They have a whole Giving Tuesday packet um, with all you need to get started, including messaging. Um, uh, and they also have like uh, JPEG, so photos that you can download to use across social media and your website. They give you a lot of different examples. Um, and so they've been itself, you know, as an entity, a really lovely resource to get started. Yeah. Anything absolutely. else, I've No, I think yeah. you covered it. I've been amazed at the growth and participation in Giving Tuesday. Um, and I, I, it's really... I think one of the things you have to remember that if you are a church and you're going to participate the first year, it's going to be a little new and it's, it's going to take some time to build up. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want Phil to share more about, because I think Phil is going to have the most relevant probably information to where a lot of you are because, and his giving Tuesday program, I think has grown over the years. So Phil, why don't you walk us through how your church has done giving Tuesday? Sure. Um, so we, uh, and I'll share a little bit, a couple of things in a second, but I just wanted to go through our story first before you're looking at a screen and that kind of thing. And if you have questions, um, I think you, you can send a message, just send a message to the chat and I'll see it and we'll make sure that it gets answered. So feel free to, um, 
like send a message at any point. And if you don't, if we have ignored you for some reason, you can unmute yourself. This, I mean, this whole thing should be pretty um, interactive. So as you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself um, and, and ask it if the chat doesn't work. So we Sorry. started. Thanks. So we started um, Giving Tuesday. I think now we're coming up on our fifth year of doing. We actually have been doing it for four years, and so we um, picked this up uh, out of you know as many places in the um, uh, sort of nonprofit world, and saw that they were doing it. And there are a couple of us at the church who are doing some social media, and we had already. Uh, tied into on some online giving pieces too um, through the foundation and that we really thought that it was important to to sort of jump on board with that and so we started the first year by just doing some social media and with the congregation inviting them to give on Giving Tuesday and it went you know decently well I'll tell you that you know for the first year we got somewhere probably between seven hundred fifty and a thousand dollars which hey you know for a first year go not a bad deal you know, we're a congregation of about 275 members and we average about 150 to 170 in worship uh, again. And we are not an affluent area um, by any means. In fact, when the kids in our local schools get free lunch and free breakfast uh, because of the median income. And so it's not just for communities that have like a lot of money. And then- Yeah, and sorry, Phil, to that, um, any so th even if the gift is like five or ten dollars think of that as bringing some that's an opportunity of bringing someone into the fold so they might have given like five bucks last year but clearly they have enough um of i guess they've been impacted enough by your message and about whatever you know you all are doing as a church to give that much and next year they might you know give a little more so even I mean, like Phil said, you don't have to be an affluent community by any means to get some benefit out of this. So thanks. Um, so year two, we um, decided again to do it again. And in year two, we started something a little different. We thought that incentivizing uh, Giving Tuesday was really um, a good idea. Uh, and so to try to get some folks in. And so I found somebody in my congregation who was willing to do a thousand dollar match. And so the incentive was that if you give and folks give up to a thousand dollars, then we would get an additional thousand dollars in. And that worked tremendously well. And so in year two, to be honest with you, I think that we received some with including the max then we received somewhere around three thousand thirty five hundred dollars uh, in year two so the max really made a difference um, for us uh, and started moving and it began to be a part of conversation within our church community and so on. and I want to be clear I'm going to share this now as I go to sort of the next thing if I can do my stuff again that one of the next really important pieces is that um, and I think Lauren's going to share this, but is that you have to share your story in Giving Tuesday of why it's important for people to give. So it's not just the match itself. And so our social media really tried to tie into some of the important pieces and things as a church. And so I'll lift that to you as a really important piece to that. So let's get to sort of year three, which was uh, 2017. I convinced a couple people in my congregation to give to be supporters. And so we raised the max level to, I think about $2,500 um, at that year. In doing that, we really pushed in our congregation and community through these, um, these different, again, another uh, one that we sent out for this last year about this, that it was uh, important to try to meet the max. And that's where we got tied in with Robin and so on. Between what we got online and what we got um, through people coming into the church office that day, because we understand that generationally some people are not going to give online. You know, it's just the way it works. And so we want to give as many different opportunities to give as possible. I think that that's really an important thing with Giving Tuesday as well. We put, push sort of the online giving piece, and I think that's really important. We still need to understand that our people who physically want to come in 
we have physical stuff on check or cash. And so I think if I remember correctly of that, um, we, re we received over on $10,000 that year in Giving Tuesday. And so let's flip one more year forward to 2018 and you can see, and you can see that we have in the congregation who had gotten excited about Giving Tuesday created a $5,000 match. And so let me tell you about that match. It was a two-fold match. One was monetarily, so one was $2,500. So if people gave up to $2,500, we would get a $2,500 from the donor. The other was per person. So every person or family unit, that we received $100 up to $2,500. So we were trying to encourage not just one or two people to give, but to have a certain amount of donors give as well. And so we hit that part two of 25. Actually, we think that we received probably around 60 gifts um, from people in one form or fashion, which is not bad. Um, for a day, and we really encourage the congregation uh, in community that is above and beyond your regular giving. You don't want to leak it out from just your Sunday to Sunday giving. It doesn't, it's not going to be a help uh, in any stretch of the imagination. And last year, I just checked with my financial secretary again uh, today to make sure our numbers are right, and we keep under $20,000 on Giving Tuesday. So we received $19,700 on Giving Tuesday, our last, um, this past year. And so this year, I'll, I'll share with you that we're doing things. We're going to, again, have the match that we're doing. And so that's a really important piece. And so, uh, and we'll probably, and we are going to up the, and not the match, we'll I'll probably only be able to convince people to give $5,000. But we're going to try to push um, more donors through. And the small donors count because they get used to the practice of doing it. And I, will be, I want to be clear, too, that we started early. If you start late, you're not, it's not going to work. We prime the pump really early. So we will actually be priming the pump about Giving Tuesday in October because it's never too early to prime the pump with that kind of stuff. And so we use the social media uh, to do it in our bullet, and then we invite others into that as well. And so I just wanna be clear that it's really important to prime that pump, and we're on Facebook and Instagram as a church, and so we use the social media um, with that. We also use the sort of traditional methods uh, as well. And again, I wanna share that that has not, our Tuesday month has not pulled away from our regular um, Sunday to Sunday uh, giving in the life of the church. And so it has worked really well for us. And people, um, we find that particularly, um, it, it's an interesting generational piece, but um, the younger generations love to give to causes. And so we really share that this is supporting the ministry of the congregation and what we're doing. And so we, we support a community garden programs. We've helped feed kids over the summer lunches. We do all of these kind of mission and kind of pieces. We do community days. For and that's what that Giving Tuesday money is for as well. Well, so just building off of a few things that Phil mentioned, um, in terms of social media, Good social media is good storytelling at its most basic principles. You want whatever you're doing on social media to make you feel something because that's what good stories do. Um, and, you know, they make you feel a broad range of emotions. But um, I say this in my communications workshop all the time. Our churches inhabit a really unique space at the moment. Um, in a time of the 24 hour news cycle where it feels like there's more bad news than good, our churches have the opportunity to break out of the clutter because we have a mission of hope. We have a mission of, of love and those messages tend to stand out and, and translate and, and give people um, sort of that light of the end of the tunnel and the Giving Tuesday messaging perfectly um, or is consistent with that, just in terms of, 
you're giving to the mission of the church. Um, and um, Phil mentioned that, you know, it's the opportunity to tell the story of your church. So whether that is showing success of your community garden, um, I know a number of our churches have food pantries, um, any of your outreach into the community tends to really translate well on social media. But you may even want to highlight some of the more internal things that you're doing. Maybe it's a really great Bible study, or you have a really great children's program, or a really active adult ministry. Um, and then the other thing that Phil mentioned was it connecting with everything else that you're doing. Social media is not your communications plan. It's one tool that you have in your arsenal that connects with everything else. So if you're only promoting Giving Tuesday on social media, you're only going to be reaching one audience that's on social media. You're not going to be reaching all of the folks that come to church on Sunday or maybe folks that don't come on Sunday but might receive your newsletter in the mail or on email. So just keep in mind that that Giving Tuesday message has to go beyond social media. And then we have a question that's probably for you all. And this is from David. Hi, David. Can you pitch Giving Tuesday as recruiting monthly donors, or is it pretty strictly a one-time gift request? Any tips on Giving Tuesday, on using Giving Tuesday to increase monthly givers? So I think that Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity to get um, monthly donors in the door, um, because if you, if you think about it like this, if someone pledges to give $10 a month, um, their gift is really $120 for the year and not that just that $10 on Giving Tuesday. And they are impacting the work of the church year round. Um, I think a great way to encourage people to do this is honestly explicitly ask for it. Um, a lot of times people won't do it otherwise. If you express that you want people to, to um, begin giving monthly, um, recurring gifts, that then I think that more people would be um, po would respond positively to it. I think also um, to look at the people in your congregation who are already giving on a monthly basis. Um, ask them to be ambassadors for it. Um, explain why they give on a monthly basis. And then also ask them if they would be willing to up what they are already giving on Giving Tuesday. Um, either make a special gift on Giving Tuesday or up what their monthly donation is. Um, it's a great opportunity, and um, I think what's important is that this is not just one day. The impact is not just one day. It is 365 or next year, 366 days a year. <laughs> um, so I think that this is a great way to, to get people to see that and celebrate the great work that you're doing year-round. Yeah, and I, I agree with all of that. And I think the follow-up is important. Um, if you want to translate Giving Tuesday uh, givers and supporters into recurring givers, you could send a follow-up email after Giving Tuesday and just say, you know, we and, and do make sure you really say thanks more than once to your Giving Tuesday supporters and in a lot of different ways, just as you would following a stewardship campaign. Uh, you you could ask them, would you like to make your Giving Tuesday gift a recurring gift? I have to say that there's, there's nonprofits that I support that I won't sit down to write them a check every month because I just don't write that many checks. But if it's easy for me to set something up as a recurring gift, mm -hmm. I, there's organizations I've supported for years because once you get into that habit, it's hard to get out of it. So, you know, David, the thinking of the recurring gift is a really great that's a, that's a really great thing to think about. Right. Um, so do you, yeah, I wanted to ask your thoughts too. Yeah. Um, actually two things. One is, again, I concur with what Robin um, said about saying thank you is so important. It is just like one of the most important things. We say thank you for lots of things in the church and we do handwritten notes, all of that kind of stuff. It is just that important. Uh, to do. And we really have followed up with our Giving Tuesday folks uh, in a really intentional way to make sure that they understand how much we appreciate their gift. And we blasted on social media and the other places too when we, were, when we have a final total uh, for the day, but we do more than that. But secondly, I would think uh, for us, Giving Tuesday has been really important because it is um, driven people not only to our church website, but then through our online giving platform through the foundation. And so people then got used to that online giving platform, which then has moved our organization 
Uh, and we get a decent amount of money now from people doing, a, a, you know, online giving. And I really think that the Giving Tuesday piece to actually do that and say how easy it was to give has then translated into um, regular money coming into the church through the online giving platform through the foundation. And if it's not through the foundation, then it's through other means. But again, that has really been a helpful piece to us. And so I think that you can, you know, as to answer David a little bit further, that I think that that Giving Tuesday, even though it's a one-time gift at that time and that day, can actually move people that forward, uh, as it were, for, you know, regular giving through that online giving platform. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to just briefly touch on the Foundation's online giving program. Um, we do offer an online giving program for churches and ministries that are associated with the Presbyterian Church USA. Uh, it's pretty easy to sign up. Um, you can find it on our website, which is presbyterianfoundation.org slash online giving. And on that page, you'll find frequently asked questions, you'll find uh, the application, you'll find a, a program, a program information sheet. All of those things will tell you how to apply. Uh, the initial application and the setup is free. Uh, we do charge um, a 2% fee for processing those payments to cover the cost of the credit cards. This is actually a program that um, that we lose money on. But we do this because we believe that this is a ministry and it is a mission of the Presbyterian Foundation to allow churches to receive gifts in the ways in which people would like to give them. Uh, it's, it's just another extension of our ministry. Uh, the other great thing I will tell you about is, yes, we do have some competitors who offer online giving. Um, but I will tell you that if you have any issues with setting yours up, uh, if you have any problems with it, you have a dedicated team that you can call and you can talk to a real live actual human being about any problems that you have, which I think is these days is a huge plus. <laughs> um, so when you set this up, you will receive a you will receive some code that you can put in on your website. You will put a button on your website and it just says donate. You click on that button and then it takes you basically to our to our web. Well, it's an e-services platform that we operate and that's where you actually give we will get and then you will get the money from us in an automatic deposit once a month once you set it up it is simple the bookkeeping is easy uh and it, it really just couldn't be any easier um if you have questions about it the best place to to get those questions answered is is on our website and that on that online giving page but it's a service that we're happy to offer great um, so the next thing uh, on our agenda is for Lauren to uh, talk to us about the growth of social media and about, about how, how, why it is so important to have an online giving portal. I think running a Giving Tuesday campaign without having a way to give online would be very difficult. I do know that Phil's church has gotten quite a few gifts that walk in the door because they advertise it during worship. Uh, we also, by the way, have a bulletin insert that you can um, download and print and put in your bulletins to remind people you're participating in Giving Tuesday. So while you will get some people, some money walk, physically walking in the door, you really need to have that, you really need to have that online giving portal if, if you can. So Lauren, uh, why don't you uh, walk us through this? Sure thing. Can everyone hear me? Um, my computer's on mute, but our system is not, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, so I'm here to talk about trends in online giving and Giving Tuesday and then what the Presbyterian Mission Agency is doing. Um, I don't think that y'all would be on this webinar if you weren't open to online giving, but I'm going to give you a little bit of statistics um, on the growth of it. Uh, I also want to kind of reiterate some things that have been said as far as it, this doesn't mean that you need to deter folks um, who only want to give, you know, with cash or check or anything like that. They can always give um, on Giving Tuesday via those methods. But Giving Tuesday is, for the most part, an online giving day. Um, so general online giving um, is an opportunity. It's another opportunity for us to reach maybe even a different audience um, to encourage and nurture discipleship. Um, and just so you know, the majority of my statistics come from um, 
Bethesda, Maryland from nonprofit source, just FYI. Um, but online char charitable giving has been growing um, every year. It was 19.2 billion in 2012. And just uh, a couple years ago, it was 31 million. I think it's over 35 uh, billion now. 54% uh, of donors worldwide prefer to give online uh, with a credit or debit card, kind of as Robin had said, that um, sometimes, especially setting up like a recurring donation, it's just so easy to do that. And then it's almost like you don't even have to think about it um, until you get those thank you cards and you are reminded why you do it in the first place. Um, the average online donation last year was $128. And just um, to let you know that at the Presbyterian Mission Agency, we've seen a huge growth. While our, most of our donations come in through the mail, um, we've seen a 70% growth in the amount we've received from online gifts just in the past four years, and it, is, it continues to grow every day. Uh, for Giving Tuesday, um, so my statistics are a little bit different from the ones that Mari mentioned earlier, um, but they also come from nonprofit source as opposed to the Giving Tuesday website. Uh, last year, over $380 million was raised online, which was up 38% from the year before. Um, in their first year, in 2012, they raised $10.1 million. So going from $10.1 million in 2012 to $380 million in 2018. Faith-based nonprofits, including congregations, have now, re now received the largest percentage of Giving Tuesday online donations. Um, the average online donation is a little bit bigger on Giving Tuesday than it is the rest of the year. Um, during the year, as I said, it was $128. And on Giving Tuesday last year, the average online donation was $134. Um, and then last year, the Presbyterians gave over $100. $105,000 to missions and ministries uh, through the mission agency, including unrestricted giving. And we are proud to say that 20% of those who gave last year were first-time donors. As far as what we're doing this year, um, we are, so we are, we believe that a rising tide loves all boats. And so we are kind of um, consolidating the, the options to give to um, the church and the big church. Um, so we are focusing on three things. We are focusing on shared mission, special offerings, and uh, OGA is um, focusing on in cash bail. Um, I, I just want to say that Giving Tuesday provides the opportunity for us to express our gratitude to God um, for all that God has done for us. And by contributing to the many faces of worldwide mission, we firmly believe that at the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Um, and that a gift to Giving Tuesday will make a difference in our efforts to be a church of action and embody Matthew 25. Um, so if you have any questions about, the, about Giving Tuesday, um, what we are doing at the Presbyterian Mission Agency, you can um, use this website. Um, it should be set up any moment now. We also have this hashtag that we would love for you to use. Um, I mean, all Presbyterians all over the country, please use this hashtag on Giving Tuesday so we can just, we can see just how great a reach we have. Um, let's see, I need to stop my share. And can I take just a moment to interject? So some people don't know what a hashtag is. And it's basically the, the number sign that you see plus a string of, of letters, sometimes some numbers. Basically that makes things searchable and social media. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see everybody who is using that term. So that the, it's PCUSA Gives. Mm -hmm. You can use this in your own churches, um, social media campaigns associated with Giving Tuesday, and we can see you there and we can say hi to you and encourage you because we love to do that. Yes, if you use that hashtag, we will be more than happy to share it so you have a bigger engagement, bigger impact. Um, I just want to say that as Mari has said, as Phil has said, but this is a day to share your story. Um, and your stories are already out there. Y'all are doing incredible things. Um, so Giving Tuesday is just a day to celebrate that. Um, you, the content is already there. Um, we see a lot of people get a little bit nervous because they think, oh, this is a whole nother campaign I have to run. I have to create something brand new. No, you already have the stories. Uh, it's just now a special day that you get to share it. Um, and then also, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure that people feel acknowledged and encouraged. Um, I, would, I would recommend um, for Giving Tuesday gifts, doing a special thank you, maybe with a handwritten note, so people know that this was something different that they took part in. Um, 
But what's so important is for you to share those pictures that you have, videos, graphics are great on social media. Um, text, it works, but people wanna see the videos and the stories and the pictures of impact. So that is what I would recommend sharing. And I think Mari has a few more tips for you. Yeah. Um, so as Lauren said, you all already have these stories and it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if you're a church of 1000 members or a church of 10, every single one of those people have stories to tell about the impact that your church has had on them and and probably more than one it's just reformatting it for social media and and what that means is you want to think mobile a vast majority of people on social media will be looking at um, will be accessing social media through their smartphones um, so making it mobile means uh, being brief um, and and keeping your captions and descriptions to anywhere between two and three sentences after that it tends to get cut off and people are less likely to read the read more um portion of, of social media um, like lauren said make sure that it's visual people respond to visual things especially online um and make it and i'm i have no idea where this term came from so many um publications I read use it, but make sure the content is snackable. So something that's easy to digest within a few seconds. Um, keep in mind that people follow hundreds if not thousands of different um, social media pages, particularly on Facebook and Instagram. So one way to sort of stand out of the clutter is keeping things brief and visual. Uh, so videos really help with that. Um, any photos, whether they're new or old, help with that as well. Um, and I'm um, trying to think of anything else. Oh, asking your, so um, Lauren and Robin have also talked about this, but bringing your congregation in on the fun and on the celebration, asking them to share your posts on social media. And if you have a few members of your congregation, who are particularly active on social media, going to them specifically and saying, hey, we're starting this Giving Tuesday campaign. You know, it's our first year. We would really appreciate um, if you would be sort of an ambassador for the church um, and, and help share this with your followers. Because uh, of all the metrics on social media, particularly on Facebook, um, sharing is going to be the most valuable sharing posts get your posts out to audiences that you're not currently reaching to facebook it's an indicator of relevance it's an indicator of enthusiasm for the post because if someone loves your post enough to share it that means it's probably higher value than a simple like although i mean all engagement tends to be better engagement and so i'll take you know likes are great loves are great um facebook also values comments so you can also create posts that start a conversation whether it, whether it's um you know what are you passionate about during this giving season something like that just to sort of um get things rolling but yeah asking folks to share and 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 maybe highlighting and and, and talking to folks who can be ambassadors for your church i think can i add mm -hmm. um not just asking folks to share but asking them to invite others yeah um i think that it's very important that we engage with giving tuesday and not just ask others um the first donation that comes in needs to come from leadership and needs to come from those so that you can then say join me um, so if you, and I mean, people are happy to do it. Sometimes they don't know that that's what you need. If you just ask, yes. if you, you know, go to Mary Sue and you say, Hey, you are very active on social media. We are having a, we are starting a new giving Tuesday campaign. Can you make a donation and then share our posts and invite others to join you? I think that that, um, that would say a lot. And especially coming from not just, you know, the church pastor or anything, but someone in the pews, someone who says, maybe explains why they, giving is so important to them. Um, but I think that in, in asking that um, 
inviting people and extending that invitation rather than just saying, please give us money um, is a much more um, fruitful thing in the long run. Yeah, and, and building off of that, um, when you're looking for content, um, asking people, you know, specifically, or especially, you know, if it's your first time, your, your question for sourcing content may just be, why do you love being part of the community or what's your favorite thing? And then you can use quotes from that as, as part of your content. If this is, um, you know, in Phil's case, they've been doing it for quite a while, but doing the My Giving Story. So for people who have given, um, asking them to share why they give, um, and then adding that invitation onto that post saying, you know, and we invite you to give as well or, or what have you. Right. And I would say too, one of the things that people tend to assume about social media is that this is going to be a young crowd who is looking at Facebook and uh, Instagram, Instagram probably, yeah. but Facebook has grayed significantly. So you, you will find that more members of, than you would expect are there. The other thing I, I like to remind people about Facebook is just because I have liked your church's page, that doesn't mean I'm going to see all of your posts. Mm -hmm. So if you can take just a little bit of money and put it behind and boost a post to people who like your page, sometimes you see the option people who like your page and their friends, that's very effective. We use that quite a bit at the foundation. 20 bucks behind a post and boost it for like three days, it, it will get a lot of traction and a lot of attention. Make sure that it's a good post right. and an engaging one. So something with some form of graphic call to action or a visual because you can boost less engaging posts, but they're still not going to do as well. Right. Um, you'll want to have the momentum of, or of what we unpaid posts are called organic posts. So you'll want to use that organic momentum. Um, and then, you know, adding 20 bucks behind that can be pretty effective. And adding on <coughs> to something that Phil said at the very beginning is that you need to start priming the pump now. Yeah. Um, we are less than two months out of Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is December 3rd this year. <coughs> um, here at the at, um, headquarters at PCUSA, we are going to start um, posting uh, maybe like a week from now, kind of a save the date post, mm -hmm. get it on people's radars, and then really start upping it up at um, the beginning of November with adding stuff to our e-newsletters, on social media, sending out emails. Um, there are many ways to get it in front of people, include it in your church bulletin, but you can't just rely on sending out that message on that one day. You have to get it on people's radars. Well, I know that, so we'll be sending out resources after this um, as well with the, inf the information that we talked about here and more, but know that you are not in this alone. You have resources here. Um, part of my job is to be a resource for our churches at all levels for social media. So if you're really interested in ramping up your social media efforts, please don't hesitate to email me and, or call me. I'm happy to brainstorm through different ways. Um, and especially, you know, bringing in Lauren's expertise from the fundraising. I'm, I'm great at the social media content. Giving uh, the fundraising stuff is a little scary. Um, I'm learning, um, but I, but so if you're interested in learning more about how you can create effective content and where you might find that, please don't hesitate to email or call. Yeah. Right. And you can too with online, with your online giving account with us, you can set up different buckets, we'll say, mm -hmm. within your online giving account. So if you wanted to have a Giving Tuesday general campaign for the church, but as part of that, you wanted to raise funds for a specific ministry, or let's say for the special offering that is going mm -hmm. on, which, which special offering will be going on in December? So in December is Christmas Joy, but we are actually um, inviting people to participate in all four, um, okay. wherever they feel called at that time. So yes, so you could, you could set up a bucket for the Christmas Joy offering within that, and those could be count towards Giving Tuesday. You really, Giving Tuesday is very flexible. You can do it any way you want to. <clears throat> You could, you could set up buckets for all four special offerings and ask people to contribute to whichever one they felt led. Um, you could set up a bucket for Presbyterian disaster assistance or for uh, supporting your mission coworker that you support through mm -hmm. Presbyterian World Mission. There's really kind of unlimited ways to do this. And there's really no wrong way. There's ways that are going to bring you perhaps more monetary success with your fundraising, uh, which we've walked you through here today. But just know that if you even just decide to try this for the first time, that's a win. That's a success. 
feel good about that because it's um, it's it can feel like a win too for your congregation just to be participating. That's a great thing. So, do we have any more um, do we have any more questions or um, we've we've answered some questions in the chat box, but uh, if there's any anything we haven't covered, we'd we'd love to have it. Phil, do you have any other thoughts you want to add? Uh, in the chat box, I put my email address, and so if people want to go in the chat box, they can see that. And so if they have questions afterwards that they can uh, email me, and I can talk to you personally on the phone or whatever, if that's easier to walk you through some of the things that we have done as a, as a church uh, again. And I would just, again, um, you know, make a plan, put it together, go for it. Uh, you don't have anything to lose by participating in Giving Tuesday. And that's what we learned four years ago and what we have learned, you know, since that point in time. If you don't participate in Giving Tuesday, you're not going to get any money on Giving Tuesday. It's just that, you know. And even if you don't have all the social media stuff with you, and if you don't have all that, if you do something in your congregation right now that's just through your, you know, newsletter, bulletin, whatever the case may be, at least it's a start. You, you have started somewhere and gotten it on the radar. And so I think that, you know, honestly, it's a really uh, excellent uh, thing. We are a Matthew 25 congregation, so we are totally wrapping. Oh, thank you. Um, we are totally wrapping the 20, Matthew 25 um, vision within our Tuesday uh, campaign this year because we just think that it makes sense about what why people are giving to to the congregation as we try to be active in those Matthew 25 areas within our community uh, and so um, that helps but as Robin said too if there's something special that your congregation does or the general um, pieces of some of the different areas that the PCUSA does or if you have a missionary that you support giving Tuesday is an awesome opportunity to you know have a very specific focus as well and so instead of a general focus like we do as a congregation through our mission and vision that sort of um, brings that money in to help with that pieces if you have something if you're that you for use that for giving tuesday um, you know support that missionary some more support your community garden one of the missions that you're doing all that kind of stuff so Two questions. <clears throat> yes, we'll um, share the PowerPoint, Phil's PowerPoint and Lauren's with everyone. And then this one is from Pastor Terry. Do you account for Giving Tuesday in your general budget? We do not. We do not put it in, in our general budget. We consider it to be extra. Um, we, um, uh, you know, it's important for us. It, uh, it allows, we have never put it in our general budget because we just honestly don't know what's going to come in. Uh, does it then help the general budget? Sure. Um, uh, in the sense that then it allows us to further fund our ministry and mission pieces, but not put it in because I just think that it's too risky to do that for lots of different reasons. And Terry, you have my email address and so you can uh, further in and we can talk about why we do those things as well. But we do not put it in our general and general budget. We just don't think that that's a wise idea. Phil, I have a question for you. Um, who creates your graphics and, and social media posts for the church? Do you do that or does someone else? Ooh, good news. I passed that on to somebody who's fabulous at social media. Right. And, um, and she's a member of the congregation that came a couple years ago, and uh, she loves doing it. And so we created a sort of a week by week of what we do with social media. And if you go on Facebook, it's First UP Church Terenum. You can find us uh, and see sort of what we are doing. But she does that for us. And I used to give her like a weekly chart of what to do. She's so good now at it. I don't have to give her a chart. She just does. <laughs> so, um, but we will work together sort of on what we're doing. Um, Robin, you turned us on to this actually a couple years ago. We use uh, Canva. Um, Canva. Canva. That's listed as a resource in the handouts we're sending. Yes. It is a lifesaver. Wonderful. Canva again for, or she uses Canva now. I don't do a lot of it. So she uses Canva now for um, our social media through Facebook and Instagram. And it is just, um, she's good at it. And you know what? To be perfectly honest, um, it gives me time to do other things and she loves doing it and sees it as ministry um, to the church. And I just asked um, because I saw how good she was at, 
or, or active on social media. Oh, and I would, uh, the other thing too is I really agree. You, uh, you need to go to your people and ask them to like and share your stuff. It's really important. So I've gone to some of my leadership and people are active on social media and said, put things up, please share. And when you share, actually comment when you share. Just don't share it because actually Facebook sees the additional comments. And so it actually shows up more when you comment when you share. And so we really push to and ask people to do it. And from what I understand, the algorithms are such that if you like something, Facebook, it's not as big as if you use one of those other emoticons that are there, the love, the laugh, the wow, the whatever, the sad, you get more traffic to the other things rather than just, you know, just the like. So that's a really important piece too. The other thing about Canva is that there's a nonprofit version of it. So all you have to do, it's pretty easy. We signed up for the nonprofit version a few years ago. You either have to just send in your um, tax exempt ID um or maybe like a document from your a tax document it's it's something really simple that you all already have on file um and then you'll have access to the um to a number of different templates um you'll have access to stock photos as well which some are free some you have to pay for a note about stock photos um stock photos are great but don't use them for people because you want to use photos of the actual people of your community and not um, the fake people in the stock photos. It's yeah. fine for things like Bibles and crosses, patterns and beautiful sunsets and stuff like that. Um, just, yeah, I no, no people. <laughs> I was wondering, Amari, if you could also mention yeah. um, scheduling yeah. social media posts. So um, scheduling will make your lives a lot easier from Giving Tuesday, like for Giving Tuesday and beyond, um, I encourage churches to spend, if you have a social media account, whether it's Facebook or whatever, spending at, at least a half an hour every week on social media, um, and that will allow you to schedule posts in advance through Facebook where there's a scheduler tool, um, and I can walk anyone through how to do that sort of offline separate from this. Um, there are also a number of different free platforms that I believe are listed on the resource. Yeah, they are listed. That'll be listed on the resource that we send out. Um, they're third-party scheduling apps. So Buffer is an example. It, it allows you to connect your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter account, and you can schedule posts in advance. It's super helpful. It allows you to focus on other things, especially on Giving Tuesday. I'm gonna be scheduling a number of posts myself in advance, so I can focus at least on Giving Tuesday on more real-time updates, but I'm pre-scheduling our stories that we send out, um, and it's super helpful. Again, if you have specific questions about that, I'm happy to walk you through it, you know, offline. All right, one more thing. I just yeah. have, actually, What's really important to do on Giving Tuesday is um, do a Facebook Live that day. Mm -hmm. go online, do a Facebook Live, be at the church or wherever you are, and just do a quick, you know, live video uh, that it's Giving Tuesday, you know, show something in the church or whatever you're supporting and stuff like that. Um, it's a really important piece uh, to do that. Um, we were sharing before, actually on Giving Tuesday last year, uh, I was um, uh, coming back from Australia on a trip. So I did a Facebook Live actually on that day as I was headed back. And so it just is important to, to and encourage as well. And so I really encourage folks to uh, think about doing that too. An alternative to that too, if you happen to be away or, um, or whatnot, Facebook has the option of you can schedule a pre-recorded video and premiere it and it'll have the same functionality as live, you've just pre-recorded it and scheduled it before. So if you don't have capacity to go live that day, there is sort of another workaround. Yeah. We're so grateful to all of you who took the time to be with us. Um, we will have a recording of this that we will post. There's a, uh, there's a foundation resources page that I put in the chat window. But we will be, we're also going to email everybody who signed up for the webinar 
you'll be able to watch this again. If you just didn't get enough of us, I, I can see how you'd want to sit through it again. Uh, and then there'll be all kinds of other things, some of the resources that Mari's prepared, they're really terrific. One of the most useful things that I ran across on the Giving Tuesday website this year was a six week communication timeline. I love that. <laughs> And that's, that's something you need to look at now. We, we have a little bit of extra time this year with Giving Tuesday since it's in early December, but not a lot because as it turns out, you guys are really super busy in November and December, so start now. Um, but we're, we're just really excited to, to, that you joined us. Um, Phil, do you think you could uh, close us out in prayer? Oh, I sure can. Yep, thanks for asking. All right, shall we? Uh, Lord God, as we go about uh, this day and the days ahead, we ask Lord, that you just open us to opportunities and possibilities for us to be a part of what you are doing in our communities. And so, Lord God, as we go from this, this day and into the day, help us to be a sent people, sharing your love and good news through Jesus Christ in word and deed. It is in the pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.